Hello everyone! Life has gotten pretty busy recently. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video, but it's time to wind down now. And you know what I want? I want a brand new handheld gaming device that I can play emulators on. Oh, uh, but one little thing. I only have 50 bucks. And that just pretty much blows every option I have out of the water. Even a used PSP can cost more than that unless you get one in rough shape from an outlet store. However, I do have one option you probably wouldn't think about. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet my test subject for today. This is the Blue Advance 4.0 L smartphone. This smartphone costs an average of $50 brand new. And this isn't the only phone at this price. There are actually many Android phones you can find sitting around the $50 price mark. My question today, though, is what kind of games can you actually play on a smartphone that only costs $50? To give a better understanding of what we're working with, let's have a quick rundown of the specs that are going to matter most to us. This phone in particular holds a 1.3 GHz Dual Core Cortex A7 processor, a Mali 400 GPU, and only 512 megabytes of RAM. This device isn't going to match up against the top of the line Samsung or Apple phones, but it's not supposed to. It's only $50. I do want to say that this phone is a year old. It's using an older Android operating system and you might find a phone with a little more power for the same price if you look around enough. But this might give us a good gauge on what we can expect for phones of this price range. We'll test it out in a couple different ways, but I'm mostly going to be trying out some emulators. Also, I need to mention something that's very important when it comes to the video quality you'll be seeing. I had a bit of a difficult time finding a way to be able to record footage from the phone. Screen capture applications for Android became more prominent upon the release of Android 5.0 Lollipop, whereas this phone is limited to Android 4.4 KitKat. I was able to find an application called MobiZen that could record footage for older devices, but it required an additional performance boost by plugging it into my PC. However, due to the low specs of the phone, I wasn't even able to record 480p video and the videos couldn't push out more than 10 frames per second. I ended up going with an application called Visor, which streams the video of my phone to my PC via USB cable. The reason why it's important to mention this is because it will require additional resources from the smartphone. From there, I recorded the streamed footage using NVIDIA Shadowplay. Before we start trying out games, let's go ahead and run the Antutu Benchmark application. This will allow us to grade this smartphone based on its performance. And well, it doesn't look so great. The Blue Advance 4.0L hits a performance score of roughly 11,000. 11,000 doesn't really tell us anything about the device, but the application keeps the scores of other devices around the world that have already been tested. My own personal cell phone, the Sony Xperia Z3V, scored roughly 57,000, and the infamous Ouya game console has a score of around 17,000. That gives us a rough idea of what we're going to be dealing with here, but numbers don't really say a lot. Let's go ahead and try out some games, specifically emulators. We'll start with a couple of games from the NES library. Games from the original Nintendo system aren't very demanding at all, of course. They should work perfectly here, but it doesn't really look like it at all, does it? Keep in mind that the video is being streamed via a USB connection, so there is a minimal amount of quality loss. Rest assured though, the NES emulator does run full speed when it isn't running Visor. Game Boy Color games would be the next step after this, and they encounter the same results. Works fine on the phone, but a little laggy during recording. It may not be an accurate representation of how the game actually plays on the smartphone, but this also tells us how limiting the hardware is when it comes to multitasking. Once we step into the next generation of systems, this issue starts to become more apparent. The frame rate drops further during recording to a point where it's unplayable. Even a Bluetooth controller becomes practically useless for platforming games due to a very large delay after a button press. This amount of lag is only during recording though. When using the device by itself, we very rarely see some frame skipping. I did also notice that both emulators for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis don't sound quite right. The audio is playing in a different tone that definitely sounds off. I took a look through the settings, and I couldn't find an immediate way to fix that. Next, we'll try out these last two handheld systems, the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. The Game Boy Advance functions pretty similarly to the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis emulators, if not, maybe a little better. We still do have an issue with frame skipping, but it doesn't occur as often. I can't say the same for the DS though. It seems to crash whenever I try to load a game. Mario Kart DS outright crashes after the first logo, but Pokemon Black can get a little further before it inevitably crashes as well. That's unfortunate, but honestly, also kind of expected. It could have something to do with Android KitKat, but who knows. And now we get to our last two, and most demanding emulators that I've installed. Mupin 64 Plus AE and FPSE. Normally a smartphone could handle either one of these, but let's see what happens when we try to run them on this budget phone. And, well, things aren't exactly pretty, you could say. 
Textures and frame rates are just all over the place in Mupin 64. It looks like FPSE doesn't have the same issues with textures, but it still does have some pretty consistent frame rate drops. You wouldn't be able to tell from the video, but Mupin 64 and FPSE don't actually run this slow. Visor is once again drawing a good amount of resources from the smartphone. Normally they do perform pretty well, but the frame rate drops are still a lot more noticeable compared to the other systems. Unfortunately for Mupin 64, we still suffer from graphical glitches with or without Visor running. So now we come to the end of our testing and we have to ask ourselves, is a $50 smartphone a capable handheld gaming device? To be honest, my answer is that I think so. While this phone in particular can't handle some of the games perfectly, it can still play several of them pretty well. With some more fine tuning in the emulators, you can probably get most of them to perform even better. My second question is, even though I think a $50 phone is capable of playing these games, do I recommend this specific smartphone? And the answer to that one is no. I said that the Blue Advance 4.0L could potentially run these games better, but it's an older phone stuck on an older operating system. However, there are newer phones that you can find around the same $50 price point. We'll have to take a look at those options some other day. And that's what we got for today. You've all been very patiently waiting for this new video and I really appreciate it. I've also been seeing the massive amount of feedback I've been receiving lately and thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you have any other ideas for future videos, please post them down below in the comments. But before we go, I have an interesting question. So this smartphone may not have been our best option for playing games. But what about the controller? What have I been using to play the games on this phone? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that next time. This is Dr. Modelot, signing out.